Hi, my name is Pratik Shukla, and I'm an interventional radiologist and assistant professor of radiology here at Rutgers New Jersey Medical School. We are an academic practice with a robust clinical service, which means we do a vast variety of procedures from head to toe on a daily basis. Our procedures include outpatient procedures through ambulatory surgery, for which we have a robust outpatient clinic where we see our patients before the procedure in consultation, as well as in the post-procedure follow-up. Our service also requires an inpatient clinical service where we provide consultations to all the other services that the hospital provides for acute and chronic need. I also serve as the assistant program director for the early specialization in interventional radiology pathway for our radiology residents. So I'm heavily involved in resident education and teaching. Well, he's got all these like curly cute, right? It's like all these like crazy like curly dots. So he has a very bad slide. So, I remember doing this left. I've already treated one. Um, you can hear this so you can put a plug in. If there's a gas or like some, uh, a coil or something, something you can just read it. Uh, uh, that that sounds good. Furthermore, I serve as the clerkship director for the medical student electives in interventional radiology as well as research in interventional radiology. Working at an academic practice, I also have a lot of administrative responsibilities. For example, I serve as the site director for radiology and interventional radiology at East Orange General Hospital, where we also provide services. Furthermore, I serve as the Quality Assurance Director for Interventional Radiology um, for our group and have various committee assignments both in the medical school and, in the, and at the hospital. I think I got interested in IR during medical school, sort of like you know how many of us in the field um, were introduced to IR, and that's by means of surgery. And IR typically takes care of problems from head to toe, you know, with treating patients that have clots in the lung, clots in the brain, liver cancer, peripheral arterial disease. And we provide really innovative, minimally invasive procedures and therapies for different disease processes. IR sort of collaborates with all different specialties to come up with problem solving techniques to answer questions that weren't answered before and provide minimally invasive techniques for challenging patients. And I think IR as a field has been growing because of technology. And for me personally, I think I've been very interested in the fact that IR is at the forefront of technology. I personally have an interest in medical device and I have my own medical device patent company. And I think anyone who's interested in technology and likes to work with their hands and solve problems, IR is a good field for you. Um, as far as day to day, like any other hospital or institution, IR can be very variable depending on the consultations that come in. But we have a typical day to day schedule. Most of the faculty will have about three to four clinical days a week. Each day starts off with uh, rounds at 7.30 a.m. with the residents and DSIR fellows on, on the service, followed by board rounds where we do teaching for the students and residents, going over the cases from the day before and preparing for the um, cases of the day. We typically start our day with our outpatient cases. We are a liver transplant center, essentially the biggest and the only liver transplant center in New Jersey. So the bulk of our work is you know, local regional liver-directed therapies like Y90, taste and ablation. Uh, we're doing you know, tips for ascites and lots of other um, things as well, like prostate artery embolization for BPH, UV for fibroids, PAD, and things like that. Every day around noon or so, we typically have an academic learning session for the residents and students. Tuesdays are multidisciplinary liver tumor board, and we have a tumor board on many other days during the week as well, which I typically attend. Other things that we do at noon include case conference, uh, journal club, which is almost bi-weekly with the residents and students presenting newly published material in, in our journals like JVIR, CVIR, etc. And after we get through our outpatient cases, we typically tend to the inpatient service. Although we are a level one trauma center and a level one stroke center, so cases can come in at any time during the day. Consultations include anything from, like I said, trauma embolization. We have a robust pulmonary embolism response team here. That's a multidisciplinary team with pulmonology, cardiology, CT surgery, and ourselves. So we get consulted for PE, DVT, you know, thromboembolic disease, complex biliary work, and you know, just the data grade grains and lines and all the bread and butter that IR sees everywhere. At the end of the day, the team will get together and we'll quote unquote run the board again. Um, and just sign off to the on-call team, the resident and attending on-call, to make sure you know we've crossed our T's and dotted our I's and all patients are tucked in, including patients on our consultation and inpatient service. For most faculty, either one day a week or two half days a week, especially now with the e-health model of medicine, we dedicate some time to clinic, where we see our patients either pre-procedure or post-procedure. All of our local regional therapy patients are patients that are referred by 
liver transplant, OBGYN, and other services are seen in pre-procedure consultation by a physician and usually a physician assistant or the ESI or resident. And patients are also seen after both inpatient and outpatient procedures for short and long-term follow-up. And then also faculty get on average one day a week to tend to academic and administrative duties. And we're like five in the middle. Is this an expandable stand? It's like a balloon expandable stand, yeah. So now we'll do we'll put a catheter all the way through and then we'll use an angioplastic balloon. Bigger one here, 10, mm -hmm. or six here. That's it. I think the best thing about working in IR or as an IR is that we're able to provide unique solutions to very patient specific um, scenarios that come up not so often. Referring physicians and teams will come down to IR not infrequently, almost on a daily basis, trying to ask us if we can you know, figure it out or you know, MacGyver it. And I think uh, with the tools that we have at our disposal and just the technology available to IR and a shift towards minimally invasive procedures, we can always figure out some sort of solution for each patient. So I think the best part about being an interventional radiologist is that we can use all of our training and all of our tools and really help patients and referring physicians solve a lot of problems. You know, so sometimes you have to put like a clip on the ulcer, right? And like, if it stays, the endoscopic, it stays the endoscopic clip, right? And if sometimes it just like stops off, right? So it just okay, stops off it. and you like keep it out by like, you know, the clip we can see under x-ray so we can see what artery is going towards the clip. As far as the demographic of the patients that we treat, Rutgers New Jersey Medical School and the University Hospital are located in Newark, New Jersey. And I believe that me and my partners and all the physicians at Rutgers are privileged to be able to treat an underserved population here. Interventional radiology, like I said, is at the forefront of technology with minimally invasive therapies. And a lot of these patients don't have really good access to healthcare. So I think that me, my, my partners, uh, and all of our colleagues are, are really privileged and take pride in being able to provide um, every single patient with the latest and greatest treatments and healthcare. As far as the lifestyle of an interventional radiologist, I would say it's very different from radiologist to radiologist, from practice to practice, from academic practice to private practice to community hospital, but also it's different from academic practice to academic practice. Here at Rutgers Jersey Medical School, we do have a very busy practice, and I would say that our hours are a little bit closer to surgeons' hours. Like on clinical days, we can be here pretty late, you know, cleaning up the inpatient work and after our outpatient cases are done. Um, but we try to have a good balance with our clinic and administrative days. Although some academic days, I'll say I'm here even later than my clinical days. As far as call, it really depends on how many sites you're covering and how big your group is. Um, my group, personally, we take a uh, call once a week uh, during the week, and one, one of the partners takes call every weekend, and we do about one in five weekends on call. I know some programs have a week-to-week -week, um, call schedule, but we have a really, really busy trauma center, so sometimes that's not feasible for just our well-being. How often do we come in overnight? I would say some nights we don't come in at all, but typically there's a trauma or a, you know, a GI bleed or a PE or something that requires our attention. So the on-call attending will be here pretty late and clean up the day. And weekends can be busy. Um, sometimes it's like working a full day. Sometimes it's like working more than a full day because there's a single attending by themselves. But it, again, it's the luck of the draw. Sometimes you can be a white cloud and have just a couple of cases that are pretty simple and quick. The really neat thing about interventional radiology, being a young field, is that there's so many different career paths and opportunities that'll take different physicians in different directions. For example, I was very interested in medical device and medical device development, and as a resident, a couple of friends and I formed a medical device modification patent company. After coming up with a brilliant idea with a couple of friends, that led to a patent and creation of a device that now exists on the shelves of many hospitals. Since then, we have uh, filed for five or six more patents that will hopefully come to fruition in the next few years.